Welcome back to the John Ford K. Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. Veterans Ford is truck town right here in New Orleans. It's your destination for Ford trucks right here. Veterans Ford, right here in the heart of Metairie. Welcome back to the John Ford Show. Mike to tell you along with John Ford John, you're talking about getting trucked. LSU mm. got it. Man, you know what? Uh, I ain't drinking the Kool-Aid. Four straight years I picked Alabama. I should have made it five. But, you know, LSU wasn't in this game, basically. Almost from the first series, you knew that they were going to do the same thing over and over and over again. And every time Leonard got the football, and I've heard some of the national guys, what a bad game he played. Bad game. He's up against a team pitcher of the Alabama defense every time he touches the football. They got three, four, five guys converging on the ball. You know, it's a form of madness to do the same thing over and over and over again and think it's going to work. And that's what's happened with Les Miles when he goes up against Alabama. You can do that against nine other teams, not against them. Mike, you're so right. You keep saying over and over. I watched this LSU team for the last three years on my show. And I'm looking at these guys, and you see the same identical plays. Just because you do it against the Eastern uh, Michigans and the Western Kentucky, Syracuse. And Syracuse, and New Mexico State. But overall, look at LSU had 182 yards of offense. Uh, yeah, take away the one long pass. One play. long 40 yard pass for a touchdown. And then uh, Leonard had a, the longest run was 18 yards, came in the end of the game. Uh, this could have been a 140 to 150 yard game total for LSU. And you got to give credit, though. You, we talked about this. The defensive unit for Alabama up front. Where's their weakest link? The secondary. Why didn't you try to throw the ball more than 19? He was 6 of 19 for 34%. You will never win football games 34% passer and not throwing the ball. They got to throw 25 to 30 times a game against an Alabama team. Alabama dominated them up front because they beat them, Mike, with the offensive unit from LSU getting pounded from that defensive side of the football. Uh, you know, I'm, listen, I'm a big guy to wave the flag for Ethan Polsick. I think he's one of the best, if not the best, center doubt. in college football. All I know is Ashawn Robinson at least three times basically forklift him right back into the lap of Brandon Harris. They beat him up front. Man, you look at what Jerron Reed, Ashawn Robinson, and Tim Williams. Tim Williams, a guy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He got into a little bit of some issues there. Glen Oaks, then he went to, I think, the Southern Lab. Uh, and all of a sudden, he goes to Alabama. He was in the backfield more than Leonard Fournette was. Uh, it, it was amazing the way they converged on LSU, shut down the running game. You have to play action pass. You've got to set up the run with mm -hmm. the pass when you play Alabama. You've seen the teams that have given him problems, teams like Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Ohio State last year. They set up the run with the passing game. And also, Mike, they throw from the pocket teams that were beating Alabama or playing well against Alabama. And they're not afraid to sit in the pocket and have my quarterback take a five-step drop, three, whatever, three-step five, whatever it may be. They'll throw some passes from the pocket, which Alabama said LSU doesn't do that. They want to play action, maybe get them on the outside. you got to have a quarterback who can throw the football. I want to flip it over to the defense real quick here. I'll tell you this much. Alabama's offensive unit pounded, I'm going to call it, soft. LSU front. They don't have enough big guys. I know you said Ed Ogeron likes them 260, 270. Well, guess what? You better go find some 300-something pound guys who can play because that's what Alabama's defense did against LSU. And Alabama's offensive unit pounded that soft defense in those little bitty linebackers from, Al from LSU. The other thing, too, is when you had opportunities to make the tackle, it was bad angles or poor tackling. Mm -hmm. you, you, you weren't making the play when you had an opportunity to make the play. And Derrick Henry now, He's right smack dab in the Heisman talk. I mean, I think, really believe that Leonard is still the front runner at right. this stage. But Derrick Henry certainly made a statement. I told you, man, you know, growing up, and I still live on the Bayou, man, I saw a guy like Derrick Henry and Brandon Jacobs right. years ago coming out of Assumption. He was a man at 14 years old. And that's who he physically looks like. He looks like Brandon Jacobs. Now, he, he's got a little bit more wiggle, a little bit more step to get out into the open field. But Derrick Henry was impressive. But a lot of times, he was going three or four yards. He wasn't even being touched. But, Alabama's offensive line completely controlled Delashu's defense. That's front. why I'm telling, telling Mike, I, I think the linebacking core for Alabama is, is underweight. I think they're just not big enough. I, I think the defensive line for, uh, for, uh, for LSU is, is light in the butt right now. I know that's great against the spread teams. You don't play a lot of spread teams in the SEC. You need to go find you bigger, thicker guys that, that can hit and tackle. We're going to go to and look at the standings here in college football of the breakdown in Clemson. Still 
Number one, Alabama makes the move up to the two spot. Ohio State three. And listen, I ain't got no problems with Notre Dame being four. I hear a lot of people talk about Iowa. Man, they got a soft schedule. Notre Dame, would they've had to run through that gauntlet despite uh, the, the one loss. I would have put them in the four spot. I think the team to watch down the stretch because the schedule gets much more difficult for them. Baylor at, at six. Stanford, a really good one loss team at seven. Oklahoma State, quietly, you hear the hoof beats uh, out of Stillwater. They're at the eighth spot. LSU ninth, Utah with the 10th spot. I think what's going to be interesting in November is how LSU comes out of November. A difficult schedule because, you know, you're facing an Arkansas team. You know what they're going to do. Right. They're going to run the football, throw the football to the tight end. They're not real good on offense. And I think Leonard goes off on them this week. I think, you know, he's got a lot of pride in his play. But to watch Baylor and Notre Dame in the month of November, how they do, that's certainly going to set up that Final Four. Well, I look at the Final Four, and it's, it, it, we're far from finding out who the Final Four is because there's a, there's, a, there's a chance Ohio State can lose a game. There's a chance Baylor can lose. There's a good chance – Oklahoma State can lose. I mean, if, if Notre Dame loses to Stanford, now just hear me on all this. And then if uh, whoever below that works great, Iowa can actually lose a championship game. When all those guys start losing, and if LFU does not lose another ball game, what happens is the chance of LSU and Alabama ending up with one loss and all these other teams drop down? There's a lot of football to be played, Mike. I a think lot. that's a lot of anti-SEC right, deal in this, and they're not going to have Danny Cannell is one of them. Yeah, well, well <laughs> Danny, Danny is who he is. Come on, I mean, he, he's right. put on there because of the ACC right. uh, market in Florida State. But bottom line is, I think that they'll only have one SEC right, team I too, uh, I get into too. that Final Four. Uh, and, and Tulane, uh, again, taking a loss. Uh, I know it was a rainy day weather, but it was it rained on Connecticut's side, yeah, too. Uh, you know, so, you know, here you see it's 7-3. 140 yards total offense for Tulane. John, you ain't winning a lot of games. I don't care who you're playing. When all you got is 140 yards. And then, and then this week they play Army, Army. which is a system football team. Right. And you know what they're going to do. Well, they're they're they not going to trick you. No, yeah. but they did very well against Navy, who's a leading rushing team in the country this past year. They went they only gave 133 yards rushing against Navy. It was close for a while, then Navy pulled it on in the fourth quarter. But, Mike, let's be honest. Week in and week out, we keep talking about Tulane. We want to talk good things. We want to say great things about it. But when you start putting the lackluster performance that you've been doing, your quarterback just isn't getting it done. I don't care what quarterback's playing for Tulane. Not getting it done. The offense is not even there. You poor defense. You know, Leonard Marshall can't do do it all out there. This is a bad football team, Tulane. And every week it seems to be a huge breakdown on special teams. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's week in, week out. But how about Navy beating an undefeated Memphis team who had basically, they had cold cocked everybody right. on their schedule. Man, give it up for Navy. They're not playing with four- and five-star athletes on that football team and got it done in a big way. We'll be back with more of the John Forcade Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford.